So in the earlier videos, we talked about um, gradient descent, and we saw the images of the little point converging toward the uh, the bottom of the bucket. Um, but uh, you know, how do you objectively decide when that's happened? So that technical word for that is is convergence. So how do you know when it's converged? So there are a few different things you can do. Um, the simplest thing you can do is just try a fixed number of iterations, um, like uh, 1,000. And then if you're working hard on a certain data set, you know, you can up that or decrease it depending on the, you know, the nature of the data that you're working with. Um, you'll also have to play around with the learning rate sometimes. Um, so fixed number of iterations is the simplest thing. Um, another thing you can do is you can consider the magnitude of the uh, the gradient itself. So to look in at what's happening, actually, yeah, let's let's look at a one-dimensional version. So let's say there's a, a curve like this, um, and we want to find this minimum here. So, um, you know, as you approach through gradient descent, as you approach the optimum, the, um, the steepness of, of the slope becomes less and less pronounced. And so um, as you converge, the, uh, the magnitude of um, the gradient um, shrinks. <laughs> So one way to, you know, in fact, like that's, that's how you characterize where the, um, where the optimum occurs, you know, the, the gradient is equal to zero. That's where there is no direction, you know, there is no direction that you can go um, because you're, you're sort of balanced on the, on the head of a pin. So this is how you detect local extremes in, in higher dimensions. It's like setting the derivative equal to zero in calculus one. Um, so what, one way to check for convergence is to see if, uh, if the gradient is small enough. So that would be another criterion that you could use. So is the gradient uh, small? So what, do you, what does small mean? You know, you'll have to experiment with different thresholds for that. So like, you know, is, is 10 to the minus 20 small? probably or you know these things will go down even to like you know 10 to the minus 300 when they when they get real, really small just the way the the floating point numbers work um, so you can experiment with that value um, another another criterion that you could use is are we making progress <laughs> so we're supposed to be going down, right? We're supposed to be going down the surface. So are we actually going down? So you have um, a curve that looks like this. And let's say you have some W here. And then you update, update that. Oh, this is going to be a terrible picture because I need to zoom in really far. So how much, how much progress have you made between um, the new W and the previous W. So, it, you know, it's the height of this side of the triangle here. So, um, is, uh, how do you say this? Like W1 minus, in the language of the, the book, which is really unfortunate, they would say T plus 1. So, is uh, T plus 1 minus that small? You could even put it in, in absolute value signs. Actually, this would be negative properly because this one is going to be smaller. So you'd want to do it the other way, but let's just put it in negative. Let's put it in absolute value signs. Um, so that's another way you could decide. So there are three ways, and um, you can also combine them. You might say do at most a thousand iterations, but you can stop early if the gradient becomes small. Um, or you can keep going until you make until you make what seems like an insignificant amount of progress at each step. 
um, and it's an it's an art you know every problem is a little bit different so these are the um, the things in your toolbox and I'm going to stop this video and in the next video we'll talk about stochastic gradient descent.